Oh, hey out there, all you viewers to be named later. How are we doing today? That's right. You can see by that big, huge green and white box that we've got something incredible from CRKT on the channel today. And that's right. We are continuing down our look at the Forge by War series. And today we have the Duhawk. Now, before we totally get into the blade and all that other fun stuff, this is, like I said, part of the Forge by War series. And hold on. Let me get this stuff out. I probably should have done that beforehand. Now, with every other company out there, you know, they always send propaganda. So, in this one, they're talking about, you know, the CRKT home front. And we've done a review on one kind of similar to that. Take a look right up top. You're going to see a card for every single affordable everyday care, everyday carry blades we've brought to the channel. You'll see the first production run of the home front right in there. Now, here's some info about the Forge by War program. Go ahead, hit pause. All right, we're done with that. Basically what it is, is CRKT teamed up with Ryan Johnson of RMJ Tactical and brought vets into the forge so they could create tools or weapons or whatever they needed on the battlefield, but they didn't have. So what I really truly like is with every single one of these, I think it's 10% of the net profits go right to the designer's charity of choice. Now, the designer on this blade, which is right here, the big old Duhawk. God, this thing is phenomenal. Seriously, it really is. I love this blade, but it has one huge flaw that I'll get to in a moment. The designer of this blade is Austin McGlown, and he has been on our channel multiple times in the Forged by War series. Take a look right up there. You're going to see a card for every single Forged by War um, stuff that we've ever brought to the channel, and it's going to have some real in-depth information about the program in that playlist. Austin's charity of choice is the Purple Heart Homes. Now I'm gonna try to leave um, info down below in the description box, like a link to them, so you can check them out if you want to. Now this bad boy got its name in, okay, camera took a dump, so back that up real quick. This guy got its name in the honor, you know, <laughs> got its name in honor of Austin's uncle, who won a silver star during the Point Two Hawk landings in World War II. Look those up. It was a bloody freaking landing is all I'm going to say. All right. I love the fact that it's a karambit with, you know, dual blades. I almost thought this was sharpened, but it's not. And I guarantee if you take a look at that, you could probably run it through a workshop or over a belt grinder and make it sharp on three edges, you know, just to really make this thing nasty. If you got to cut something like, I don't know, insurgents or bad guys or people who break in your house. It fits pretty okay in my hand like that. I will admit with the little knuckle nub down here, um, my hand kind of feels a little scrunched in. But doing it like this, it almost feels like my pinky's really out of place and I might hurt myself doing things with it. But that's just me and, you know, my feelings on it. Now, let's get into the stats and the fun stuff like we usually do. It's got an overall length of 9.625 inches. Now, depending what you want to look at as the blade, which I'm looking at that primarily right there, is 5.09 inches with a cutting edge of 4.25, which makes me go, okay, so where are you measuring? Because that doesn't look like over an inch or whatever, but I don't know. Those are the stats. The blade width is a flat 2 inches, and the handle is 4.53 inches, and it weighs about 9.30 ounces. Now, it does have that plain edge. I can't tell you the grind on it because I could not find it in any of the major sites that I usually look at. It's done in what they call the Hawkbill style, but I don't know if a Karambit is a style, but, you know, there, there's Hawkbill. The steel on this is their usual SK-5, and it has a black powder coating. You can carry it in its sheath, which is included. Okay, guys, so the camera took a dump. So as I was saying... It has a glass reinforced nylon sheath with a tech lock. And that's this guy right here. All right. And there's your tech lock. Yeah, I just put it on that way just to get it attached and whatnot. Now, I think you saw in the opening, and where did I drop it? Of course. Ah, here we go. Now, it has this little, um, you know, the screw with the washer thing that was sitting right in there. I had to remove it because I'll be honest with you, once it's in place inside the uh, sheath, it's got... A hell of a retention, all right? And you really have all kinds of issues trying to get it out. <sighs> you got, I've had to physically separate and pull to get it out. 
So if I want to use this as a self-defense weapon right now, fresh out of the box, ready to go, I can't. I have yet to be able to, in about the week and a half that I've got it, to be able just to pull it clean. <clears throat> so I think that that is a massive fail on a design part, or maybe it's CRKT. It's one of those. And, oh, by the way, the scales on this are G10, and it is made in Taiwan. Guys, I got to admit, I'm so sorry for the choppiness of this video. I just, I can't believe it's doing that. But still. Now, let's go on to the usual little cut tests that we do. If you're brand new to my channel, we usually only do three. All right, so here's the first. Heavy duty stock paper. Okay, well... <laughs> I'll take that right out of the gate. Yeah, I was trying to get a curly cue right off the bat. So let's just go. All right, that ain't bad. You do have some paper flakes. You know, and this is not, in my opinion, designed for bushcraft work or any of that fun stuff. It's designed to hurt someone if you have to. <coughs> All right, simple paracord. Let's go with that pull test. Ah. Seriously? Wow. That's all I've got to say is wow. Slice test is no problem, but pulling it? Doesn't feel dull. Wow. Alright, and let's go with Mr. Ratchet Strap. Yeah, well, I don't feel like I had a good hold on that, so forgive me. Yeah, it goes through it, but I mean, yeah, interesting. All right, well, it cleaned up the blade. Okay, so, like we usually do, I took a look out there on the internet and found it in three different areas. Over on Amazon, CRKT, and Blade HQ. Amazon, this is going to run you seventy fifty eight. CRKT currently has it listed at one hundred thirty five, and Blade HQ has it listed at eighty two ninety five. As of May fifteenth, twenty twenty, is when I'm filming this video. Over on Blade HQ, it's been reviewed one time. It's got a five out of five star rating. Over on CRKT, it's been reviewed twice and gotten a four out of five. And it has 45 reviews for a 4.5 out of 5 star rating over on Amazon. Now here's the fun part of the video for me. I want to know your questions, comments, love, hatred, anger, whatever, down below in the comments section. I really want to know if you think she's nice or an F-bomb. Nice or an F-bomb. Guys, honestly, I'm on the fence on this one. <clears throat> I am a fan of Austin McLean and what he's doing. I'm a fan of what CRKT is doing with the Forged by War series. I don't like trying to get it out of um, the sheath. If I'm using this for self-defense, I'm screwed. As you saw, that retention right there is just massive when the blade's in place, which I think is good for retention of a blade, but really piss poor when you're trying to get it out quick to defend yourself. I was really shocked by that pull test on paracord. I can't believe I had to put that much effort into popping some paracord. But that's me. Okay, guys. Now we're at that usual point where I'm going to go, so for you first time viewers of the channel, I'm going to say thank you so very much for watching this video. Look, I know we do things really, really differently here on the channel, and I very appreciate your view time. Hopefully I've earned more of it. Now, for you guys who are first time, you know, first time viewer and you long time viewers who have yet to subscribe, take a look right down here. Well, actually, well, let me back that up a second. I'm going to ask, well, you know, what's holding you up from subscribing? Let me know what I can do with a comment right down below, you know, in the comment section that I can... Eh. I am really screwing that up. And knowing my channel, that's nothing new. So for you first-time viewers and long-time viewers who have yet to subscribe, well, my first question is why. Why don't you go ahead and leave me a comment down below what I can do to earn your subscription. See, I knew I'd get it. <laughs> you know, let's be constructive and let's see what I can do to change future videos in order to help better things along. After you've done that, take a look right down there. It's going to be a big old channel symbol popping up. Go ahead, click on that thing. It's going to bring you right to subscribe. After you've gone ahead and knocked that out the way, if you so choose, please destroy the bell icon. Why? Great question, you. Because it's going to notify you, my awesome viewer, every single time when this channel uploads a brand new video. Now, speaking of those incredible videos, 
2 will be popping up over here. Those are going to be videos that YouTube is going to select from my catalog that they think are going to be a great viewing experience for you. There we go, guys. My quick tabletop look at the CRKT Duhawk. Thank you so much for viewing this, and I hope all of you stay safe and have an incredible day today.